got uh, with us today, Dr. David Yeager and Dr. Jeff McAllister uh, as our panelists and our presenters. But before we jump into the case presentations, what I'd like to do is just take a quick walk through uh, some of the Nanobone technology to give a little bit of background on you know, how we got to this point with Nanobone. I'm Paul Byerly by way of uh, introduction. I'm the CEO of Artos and one of the co-founders of Artos Inc. in here in the US. So launching into this, um, let me see here, there we go. Um, Nanobone synthetic bone graft is a clinically proven cost-effective uh, replacement for all other bone graft materials. The Nanobone SPX putty, which you can see comes in a variety of different sizes in that the syringe, uh, uses a, what we call applied nanobiology for bone repair. And what, what we're talking about is we are unique in, in the size of the material that we use and that we use nanoparticulates for the, as a foundation for nanobone. The nanobone SBX putty is indicated for use as a standalone bone uh, void filler. It's actually a bone graft substitute, which is a little higher standard for synthetic bone grafts. It actually is designed to be used as a standalone as you don't really need to add anything to it to make it work. So you don't have to add blood or bone marrow aspirate or any other material, even in spinal fusion, one of the more difficult places to get bone to grow. Uh, the, the QD is a, an iteration of the, the applicator in that within the QD it's preloaded and QD stands for quick delivery. Uh, it's preloaded with five cc's of the Nanobone SBX putty and it allows for a precise and rapid placement of the bone graft into the surgical site. So when we talk about nanobiology and really sort of the embodiment of what nanobone, the foundation of nanobone from a science perspective, what we're talking about is really the, the foundation, which is the hydroxyapatite, nanocrystals of hydroxyapatite. And, and what we've done is we've got nanocrystalline particles, three nanometers thick by 50 nanometers across, suspended in a silica gel matrix. And that's the combination of those two, uh, the, the HA and the ASG gives us nanobone. Uh, hydroxy, the hydroxyapatite nanocrystals have a similar size and shape. We actually call them bioidentical. So they're the same chemistry, morphology and, and size as what's naturally occurring in human bone, which is the three nanometer by 50 nanometer tiny little particles. And to put that into perspective, three nanometers thick, which is the thickness of each of our crystals, is thinner than a strand of DNA. So you're, it's very tiny stuff. Um, the, these nanocrystals aren't bound together. They're suspended in the, uh, the um, amorphous silica gel as the composite. Um, essentially then, the, you know, as, as in the, you can see in the slide, the ASG allows us to form a matrix between the, the HA and, and the silica gel, and, and that allows you to have a granule that you can work with. The ASG is, is not inert. It's got some biological activity of its own. So it's very hydrophilic and it releases silicon dioxide. And so there's a negative, a char a negative charge associated with the uh, ASG, which triggers angiogenesis and, and and actually helps to start forming a clot right away. The negative charge actually kicks off what's called uh, clotting factor number 12 or the Hageman factor. So that's the very first thing that happens when you implant nano, nanobone in situ. To give a little bit of a sort of a graphical representation of what I'm talking about, you can see if you could get ultra magnification of one of our particles, the blue in the, in the little picture to the left represents the amorphous silica gel with those th three nanometer by 50 nanometer wafers suspended in the ASG. On the right, we form granules out of that material that you can handle. Uh, those are uh, roughly two millimeters by about 0.6 millimeters in size. They kind of look like little pine cones. To make the uh, SBX putty, what we do is then we add an inert carrier to, carrier to that to make that product handle well so it's cohesive, it's not just a bunch of loose granules. 
What happens when you implant nanobone is the ASG is replaced by organics. So it's all the different proteins that grow bone. So you've got osteopontin and calcin and all the different BMPs and fibronectin and vitronectin. There's a whole slew of different proteins that, that essentially kickstart bone growth. And what happens is those proteins actually stick with a higher affinity to the nanocrystalline HA than the silica gel does. So those proteins come in and then selectively replace all that silica gel, just basically pushing it out. And then that, that is then excreted out of the body, leaving those nanocrystal particles in place in a matrix now of just organics, all the different proteins that you need. You're gonna have early blood supply. You're gonna have cells, all the stuff you need to grow bone. So that happens in about between 10 and 14 days post-implantation. So by 14 days, essentially all the ASG is gone, leaving behind an organic matrix that has the nanocrystal particles of hydroxyapatite. So effectively what you, you wind up with in just a two week time frame is an osteoid formed, but it's a little bit more than that because osteoids are not typically mineralized. We have a mineral component to our osteoid at, at 14 days, no other, uh, product on the market does, does this. This is a unique mechanism of action to nanobone. And that's what, quite frankly, is the foundation of the success, the clinical success of the product. Here's a, a few slides that, that show that you're attracting now all these different uh, growth factors and uh, different, different proteins that, that uh, grow, help to grow bone, osteocalcin, osteopontin, BMP, so on, and so on. At this point, what I would like to do is introduce our first presenter, Dr. David Yeager. Um, Dr. Yeager is, currently practices at Morrison Community Hospital in Morrison, Illinois. He graduated from Seattle University with, a dual, with dual degrees in general science and English and graduated from, uh, from the honors program. He's, he is a doctorate graduate of Rosalind Franklin Chicago Medical School at Finch University where he received his doctorate in podiatric medicine. He graduated residency from Cambridge Health Alliance, which is affiliated with Harvard Medical School. He is dual board certified by the American Board of Podiatric Surgery in Foot and Reconstructive Rear Foot Ankle Surgery. He is a past chair of the American Society of Podiatric Surgeons where he is the current education chair. Uh, he is also a fellow of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons. He is a past board member of the American Podiatric Medical Association and past president of the Illinois Podiatric Medical Association. He is a past residency director and actively promotes education or educating the young physicians of the podiatric profession. He has several publications and recently was guest editor for Foot and Ankle Quarterly and has performed several research projects. He has lectured both nationally and internationally on a wide range of topics from wound care to advanced foot and ankle reconstruction. He has volunteered locally and nationally for several, several organizations and is honored and privileged to lecture at this year's Midwest Podiatric Conference. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Yeager. Go ahead and take it away. I'll flip to your first slide. 